So Lori called me today while I was at work to let me know that we had water on the corner of the bathroom along the sink and shower. And then we also had water in the bedroom. I really wasn't sure what it was. We had rain yesterday and or last night. So I thought maybe it was a roof leak and that the water had traveled down inside the wall. So I asked her if she would come out here, shut the water off, dry up the water that was on the floor, put some towels down, and just see if the water continued. And that worked. Uh, we had no more water on the floor. So then I asked her to come back out here, turn the water back on, which she did. And probably within an hour, we had water on the floor again. So at that point, we concluded we had a water leak and not a roof leak. When I got home from work, I could hear water as I was getting ready to come in uh, underneath the RV. So I looked under there and we had a steady stream of water coming out of a small hole in our underbelly. And we also had water coming out of our overflow lines to our fresh tank, which really confused me. So I had either two issues going on or one major issue. Uh, I went online and was trying to look at um, any water line diagrams for the Grand Design Imagine line for the 2670 MK. They don't exist. So we contacted Grand Design Customer Service. And so, I mean, if you are generally handy, it is something that you could do. Um, I would recommend probably starting after. Well, we elected to not call out a service tech, and I got under there and dropped the underbelly uh, panel so that I could take a look and I was able to identify where the water was coming from and it was coming from a hole above the uh, black tank. So with that being said, um, we went back inside and did some more investigating from inside. So I took the cover off and checked back here. It's tight and cramped, uh, but I was able to see that there was no water underneath the tub. The water lines were all dry to the touch. There was just a little bit of water on the floor here. Uh, so I checked behind. We took all this out. I took this divider out and I was able to see a little bit of water on uh, the floor against this wall. So when I came back here and took the drawer out and looked, had full access to all the water lines right here. I found the uh, vacuum breaker that water line was leaking and was water was running down onto the floor through the hole that goes to the black tank what the water was doing was was running down that hole on top of the black tank running off the top of the black tank into our underbelly and puddling up it was just a process of elimination to isolate it to this area so lori uh, let me know that she saw online on their website that uh, you can check these to make sure debris hasn't gotten caught in them. Then I found a couple YouTube channels where stink bugs have gotten in there and clogged the check valve. So I'm going to pop this one off and take a look at it. So what the vacuum breaker slash check valve is, is that comes off of your black tank flush. So when you hook the hose up on the outside of the rig, it comes in to our RV right here. That goes through the line and into this vacuum breaker. Now the vacuum breaker is mounted a minimum of six inches above the highest point in your water system. What that does is it allows water to come in. It, when the water comes into the valve, it pushes up the check valve and stops it from leaking out and then it continues through to your flush. Now when you shut the water off, as the water backs out, the check valve comes down and seals it and then it allows airflow to come through and escape. Now the airflow is an anti-siphoning, uh, so that's very important. It does not allow any uh, black tank matter to come back into your line. Uh, or into your RV. So it's a very important uh, device. Uh, there is a high failure on these. If you look online, you'll find all kinds of things about them failing and leaking just like this. So a lot of people 
replace them with brass. Uh, it costs probably twice as much. You can either replace it with a brass one and upgrade or you can do what we're going to do. We're going to put the same one back in, but we're also putting some water detectors down here uh, to alarm us if there's ever a future leak. And This is more of a common issue, but it was not even on our radar, so we just wanted to put something out there to make you aware of it. All RVs have this. It's standard in the industry, so make sure you know where your vacuum breaker is and it wouldn't even be a bad idea to order a replacement so if or when you have issues you can just change it out right then and um, you won't have to wait like we are for it to come in the mail so in addition to our vacuum breaker um, going bad and having a leak the other was coming from our fresh water tank overflow and those are two separate issues but they both happened at the same time and um, that's very odd I don't know why that is but the pump on our RV is allowing water to pass through the check valve and backflow into our fresh tank it filled our fresh water tank completely full and then it started backflowing out the overflow that's a good indication that your water pump uh, needs to be looked at or replaced. So we ordered this regulator. It is a lead-free regulator and it has a one-year one warranty. And just first impressions, compared to the current regulator that we're using, it looks really nice. It has an oil-filled gauge and it also has the ability to with a uh, straight blade screwdriver, you can adjust the pressure. So we're really uh, excited to give this a try now. We didn't just end up with one leak, we ended up with two leaks, possibly even three leaks, all at the same time. So we think it was due to a surge in the water pressure. So we're really excited to put this new water regulator on our hose. All right, so at this point, uh, I've identified where the water leak is. I went ahead and left the underbelly uh, loose. I put a couple of the self-tapping screws and washers back in, just in a couple spots to hold it up. So the wind wasn't blowing it around, but I left it open so that uh, the air could dry it out under there. I also went ahead and um, zip-tied a lot of the wires up that were hanging down and laying on top of the uh, underbelly and pushing down on it so i zip tied those up uh, maybe that'll help for a while anyway so right now i'm going to go ahead and reinstall and fasten that back up and then all i got to do is change out that vacuum breaker inside and we're all done now i also need to retape the seams because uh, I did have to cut a seam and then I'm also going to have to re-foam insulate some of the gaps. Uh, I had to cut around some of the um, gray tank valves in order to lower that underbelly. So I'm going to go ahead and reseal it, retape it, and we'll be all done down here. Now, something else we learned through this process is to Never leave your, your black tank flush hose hooked up. I left ours hooked up. However, I had a, a T installed and I was able to turn it on and off at that T. And what we learned was that the pressure within that line uh, does not allow for the water to to backflow out and allow that check valve to come down and seal. It holds pressure in the line, which allows water to uh, burp up out of the vent of that vacuum uh, breaker. So never leave your hose installed full time or long term on your back flush. Uh, always disconnect that and let the water drain out.
Okay, so I went ahead and filled the fresh tank two thirds full and turned on the water pump. And I just hooked up the outdoor spigot. So the pump's working and it's not leaking right here at the pump. And we'll make sure that the check valve is working properly. That'll take care of the check valve leak and the vacuum breaker check valve leak. And if I still have water coming out of the underbelly, I'll know that I have a fitting leak somewhere. And after we made the repair, we decided to get these water detectors. These are the Gobi. They do come in a two pack. And the cool thing with these water detectors, you place them on the floor like this, and if water touches the top, it will sound the alarm. And also there are metal feet. And if water touches any of those, it will sound the alarm as well. So we're really excited to know about a leak before it damages anything. So we're excited to put these out. Well, our water leak is completely fixed. It's been a couple weeks now. And we've not had any other issues. All I had to do is replace the water pump as well as the breaker valve. The water pump took care of the overflowing of the fresh tank and the breaker valve took care of the water flowing into the underbelly. So hopefully this video was helpful and if you have water leak symptoms like this, uh, this might be a good place for you to start. Now just a quick tip, if you put water detectors out in different areas in your rig, make sure to pick those up before travel days so they don't get lodged somewhere or maybe fall down the hole that goes to the black tank or gray tank and then you got to fish them out. Uh, so make sure to pick those up and then replace those uh, or put them back out when you get to your next location. Thank you so much for watching. Now get out there and wander.